Hi everyone, today we're going to learn about factorial notation. Last lesson we learned about the pigeonhole principle. Counting outcomes when repetition or replacement is allowed is straightforward, even when the numbers become very large. When there is no repetition or replacement, the calculations can be long. Consider the following. A card is drawn randomly from a set of, card, set of 12 cards numbered 1 to 12 without replacement before the next card is drawn. In how many ways can all cards be drawn? So if we think about this as drawing the first card, if we think about how many cards can be drawn in the first card, we have 12. Then because we do not replace that card, we only have 11 cards left. So we have 11 and so on and so on. So then we'll only have 10, 9, 8, and these are to choose from 6, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now it's very tedious to have to calculate this and put this into our calculator. But if we were to go 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, we would get a very, very large number and it takes us a very long time compared to, compared to how long it would take us when we use factorial notation. So the product of consecutive whole numbers is called, for this example, is called 12 factorial. And is, this would be written as 12 to the, with an uh, exclamation symbol. Factorial notation allows us to more easily calculate the number of possible outcomes when selecting all objects in order with no replacement or repetition. So for n factorial, it equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times dot 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 until we get to times 3 times 2 times 1. In mathematics, we find it convenient to define 0 factorial as being equal to 1. Therefore, 0 factorial equals 1. We have some examples here. So we want to evaluate 5 factorial. So all we do to get the factorial symbol on our calculator is hit the button that looks like this. So the X, the exclamation mark button, which can be located below the on button on the Casio calculator. So if we go 5 factorial in our calculators, we get an answer of 120. Now that saves a lot more time than just writing 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and putting that into our calculator. For 7 factorial, this would be the same as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And when we put that into our calculator, we get 5,040. So it's much quicker just to go 7 factorial into our calculator. For 26 factorial, this is a very, very big number. So when we go 7, 26 factorial onto our calculator, we want to round it to three significant figures. But when we put it on our calculator, we get 4.032914. Six one one times ten to the power of twenty six. So when we're rounding to three significant figures, remember it means that we just want the first three digits that are significant. So in this case, the first three digits that are significant is four point zero three, and then we write our times ten to the twenty six. The numbers after those three digits just become zero, and we would round our third significant figure up if the number after it was greater than or equal to 5. For example 2, a group of 10 people are being waiting to serve in a cafe. They are each randomly assigned a number from 1 to 10. What we want to calculate is in how many ways is it possible for the numbers to be assigned. Well when we think about it, the first number could be assigned 10 ways, the second number could be assigned 9 ways and so on and so on. So this means that the total ways that this that it's possible for the numbers to be assigned is 10 factorial. 
where 10 factorial equals 3,628,800. That's a lot of ways for the numbers to be possibly assigned. What we now do for part B is that one person in the group needs to be served quickly because he has to leave. If he is given the first number, in how many ways is it possible for the numbers to be assigned? So if we think about it this way, that this guy needs to be assigned, given the first number. So he, there is only one way that he's going to get that. He's going to get the number one, right? But then the people after it, there is nine different people that could get the second number, then eight, then seven, then six, then five, then four, times three, times two, times one. So this is the same as one times nine factorial. And when we calculate one times nine factorial in our calculator, we get that it's 362,880 ways that it's possible for the numbers now to be assigned. Now, it's really important to note that 10 factorial is exactly the same as 10 times 9 factorial, which is exactly the same as 10 times 9 times 8 factorial, which is exactly the same as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial, and so on. Because we know that 9 factorial is just 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down to 1. 8 factorial is just 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 all the way down. So it's important to note that when we're talking about factorials that we can always have that number first and you can see the flow on effect. If you are following the Margaret Groves Maths and Focus Mathematics Extension 1 textbook, you would now complete exercise.